Welcome back to Shifting Lanes. In this video, I am giving my 2020 Hyundai Veloster N some retro super touring vibes. I love the 90s British touring cars and I want to give my car that same flavor. So I bought some new wheels and tires to replace the 19 inch OEM performance pack wheels. And I've decided to go with the 1552 chicanes because of its throwback retro super touring styling. And one big benefit of this design is that it's so very easy to clean. I got these wheels from our friends at TatusMotorsports.com. The product is linked down below in the description box if you're interested. You'll notice that the one neat feature on this wheel is the faux center lock design. Again, giving it that race car look. And behind that locking nut is a plate that hides the multiple bolt patterns. So this wheel can also fit the 5x100 size. 1552 makes the chicane in several sizes. So I got them in 18 by 8.5 with an offset of plus 45 and a bolt pattern of 5x114.3. That's right, I downsized from the OEM's 19 inches to 18 inches. There are several benefits to this. One, tires are usually cheaper. I plan to autocross the Veloster N, so I will be going through a lot of tires. And two, I live in the state of New Jersey where the roads can be pretty terrible. So going to 18 should mean a lower chance of blowouts and bent wheels. When I put them on a scale, they came in at 25.6 pounds. They're pretty heavy. So for autocross purposes, they're not the best, but they're still lighter than the OEM wheel and tire setup. The weight of one 235-40R18 tire that I'll be using, more on this specific tire later, is 24 pounds, which means that this wheel and tire combo is 49.6 pounds. That's 8.8 .8 pounds lighter than the OEM setup. So before I install the tires on here, I wanted to make sure that the wheels fit. The nice thing about these wheels from 1552 is that they've been designed to clear big factory and aftermarket brakes. During fitment, I found that there's now a very generous clearance here on the Veloster N, which means that I can easily, easily clean the brake calipers. There's also plenty of clearance near the shocks as well. And since I'll also be daily driving this thing, I wanted to make sure I have TPMS installed. I don't want to be bothered with a warning light on my dash at all times. And while I'm buying parts, I also bought a centering ring and some Gorilla conical lug nuts. This is the only style that will work with the 1552 chicanes. Once I got all the parts, I loaded up the wheels in my press car at the time, which is a 2020 Toyota Avalon Hybrid XSE. If you want to see that review, please click the link up here. I then took it to my local Firestone to get the tires mounted. When that was all done, I decided to go one step further and applied Avalon King's ceramic coating on these wheels. I wanted to coat my wheels so that cleaning the brake dust should be an easier job. I plan on giving the rest of my Veloster N the ceramic coating treatment as well, which will be in another video. If you want to get yourself a set of Avalon King ceramic coating kit, you can click the link in the description box below. If you type the code SHIFT25 at checkout, you can save yourself $25. Applying ceramic coating is totally something you can do yourself. It can be a bit tedious, but it's totally worth it. Now that that's all done, it's time to mount the new wheels and tires. And always be sure to apply anti-seize where the wheels touch the brake rotor. And for the Veloster N, I torqued it down to 80 foot-pounds. As for the locking nut, I actually designed and 3D printed my own hex wrench. 1552 sells a wrench for about $10, but I decided to DIY this part as well. And given that these center lock nuts is purely cosmetic, you don't need to apply a lot of torque here. So a 3D printed part is actually okay to use. Tight is right. If you're wondering what kind of real torque a real center lock requires, it's up to 450 foot-pounds. And just like that, the wheels and tires are on. I think if you add some sponsorship graphics on here, the Veloster N is going to look the part of a 90s super touring car. So how does it handle? Well, the tires that I got are the Bridgestone Potenza RE71R. If you've autocrossed before, then you know that that's one of the best autocross tires with a 200 treadwear rating. Uh, there's a bunch of other tires with a 200 treadwear rating, but the Bridgestone RE71R, the, the new Falcon Azenus RT660, and also the BF Goodrich Rival S is also another good autocross tire. But I chose this one because the 
RE71R comes in a lot of different sizes, so it was readily available. I didn't have to come up with a weird tire size that may potentially rub against my fenders, so I went with this. How does it compare to the OEMs? Well, the P0s are already a very good tire, but compare the contact patch between the two, you can see that the RE71R has so much more meat on the shoulders, so that means that uh, during cornering, which is what the autocross is all about, you're going to have more contact patch rubbing against the road, so it's going to give you more grip. The downside to that increased contact patch is the sound, and the sound is horrendous in this car. I mean, if you go 80 miles per hour with the windows down, you are going to need earmuffs. I mean, this thing just howls. There's an easy fix to that, of course, just roll the windows up and turn the music up, but um, again, that's just a slight drawback to having a much better tire is that the tire noise is going to be unbearable. But so far, I've been pretty happy with going to an 18-inch wheel because the 19-inch tires are very low profile and the Hyundai Veloster N is already a fairly stiff car. So normally I like to drive it in custom mode so that I could keep everything in Sport Plus but keep the suspension in normal setting and also turn the rev matching off. So that's normally how I drive. So overall the 18s don't feel as stiff as the 19 inches because uh, it's got a higher profile on it. So. I'm not sure if that's going to pay off in the autocross or not. I'm going to find out very soon. And given that the car is already very stiff, maybe with a softer tire, it's going to come up to a nice medium where it'll be more balanced. We'll see. We'll find out soon enough. So there you have it. That's the wheel and tire video. Please let me know your thoughts. Do you like this wheel design? Do you like it on the Veloster N? Should I have gone a different direction? Should I have gone with a lighter wheel? Maybe a darker colored wheel? I don't know, please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Let's just wrap it up right there. If you like this video, if you learned something, please consider hitting that like button, hitting the subscribe, and also hitting that notification bell so that you can get notified anytime I make a new video on a press car on the Hyundai Veloster N or anytime Greg does a new video on his Volvo or BMW M3 and Chad does a new video on his Volvo C30 or Mustang GT. So there's a lot of different content on this channel. Please subscribe so that you can stay up to date. Uh, I'm gonna wrap it up right there. My name is Hanson. I'll see you next time.